Hi Taurus, welcome to October. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start on your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So, this month, we have a full moon in Aries, which is happening in your 12th house. And that's on October 1st. We start the month off with a great big full moon. And then we have a new moon on the 16th in Libra which will be in your house of um, employment and health, the sixth house. So there could be some new beginnings there. And then um, Pluto goes direct on the 4th, and Mercury goes retrograde on the 13th. So we have a, this is going to be a challenging month, I think, for a lot of people. But there could be some surprises as, as Mercury um, travels retrograde it's going to oppose Uranus toward the end of the month and that's going to be in your sign so there could be some surprise messages coming at the end of the month around the around the new moon so let's see what the cards say for Taurus what does Taurus need to know about love and relationships for the month of October. What is coming up for Taurus? The Ace of Swords, the Judgment, the Eight of Swords, the Ten of Wands, the King of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, the Strength card, the Fool, and the Four of Swords. Okay, so the Ace of Swords, you have been, this is warrior energy. This is a new beginning in the way that you're thinking, a new beginning in um, how you're in your thinking process, the ace, the swords are about thoughts and ideas. So you may have some new ideas about how, what direction you want to go in in a relationship, and you're ready to take action. You have the ace of swords here. This is the warrior energy, and you have judgment here. You're going through some changes. You're waking up to the reality of your life, and you're deciding. You know what? I am not going to sit around and wait for things to happen. I'm going to make them happen. So if you're looking for love, you're not going to be sitting by the phone waiting for it to ring. You're going to be calling the person or you're going to be figuring out how can I get, how can I make, shake things up? How can I make things happen? Um, judgment sometimes comes up when um, you've been working on yourself and you feel empowered. You're feeling stronger. You're feeling, um, like you could conquer the world. You're ready for change. And you're going to make change happen. You're seeing the truth about a lot of things this month. And you're going to take action. Um, judgment comes up sometimes when we change jobs or change relationships. or um, It could also be a, an issue where you have to forgive someone. Because the judgment has to do with forgiveness sometimes. But you're ready to let the, leave the past behind and move into something new. So if you're not in a relationship, you're going to be taking action to get yourself around people where you can make some type of connection. If you are in a relationship, maybe you decide to take action to either make it better or take action to leave. If you're tired, if you feel like you know, you're not getting what you want. You have the Eight of Swords here in the past, so you have been feeling trapped or stuck. Um, part of it is a fear of moving out of your current situation. It's like, well, and you had this Ten of Wands, which you've been carrying a lot of heavy burden. You've been working really hard. And you just feel blocked, like you're trying to get things, you're trying to move things where you have been in the past, but nothing seems to move. Uh, you just feel stuck or trapped. But, um, 
that's coming to an end. You have the 10. This is the 10 and it's, and it's in the position that's passing. So you're coming out of a difficult time. And coming up in the future, you have the King of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. So there could be some messages coming in. Um, you could be focused on the King, if it's a person, someone who's very um, financially stable, someone who cares about family, and they like to provide for their loved ones. He could be an entrepreneur. He could be someone who, and this is he or she, because the court cards could be either sex. But the energy of the King of Pentacles is someone who, he's good with money. He either owns land or he has um, investments. He could be an entrepreneur. He could own his own business. Um, but he represents someone who's a stable influence, a financial stability. You could be dealing with someone where you're looking for some kind of financial support. Maybe you're looking to get a loan or he offers support in some way. So there could be a partner that is helping you financially. Um, the Page of Pentacles, there could be a new relationship, especially with the Fool here, with someone who is um, very down to earth, very stable, financially um, secure. You have the Three of Cups here. The Three of Cups um, is a card of celebration and support, getting together with friends, but it's in your negative thinking sector. So I feel that you know, people might be wanting you to come out and party or something, and you're you're afraid to, maybe because of COVID or something. Um, but maybe you need to get out more, and you need to um, reach out to friends, because you have support, even though you doubt, you don't think that you have the support, but you do. You have people that are there for you. In your environment, you have the strength card. So you could be dealing with someone. You Maybe you're taking care of someone or you're there for someone. Because uh, this is the, the lion that's wounded. And this girl is taking the is taking the thorn out of its paw. So, and, so it could be you're dealing with a Leo or a fire sign. Or someone who is going through a difficult time in some kind of health situation. And you're there to offer emotional support. Um, the strength card could also mean some, that you're dealing with someone that has anger issues or emotional issues. Um, they go to extremes of emotion. But I feel that you have the Fool card here in your wish fulfillment sector. So you're looking for something new. You're looking to turn the page. You're wanting to start a new cycle. So I feel like you're finishing up one cycle and getting ready to move into a new um it could be a new relation, brand new relationship. It could be a new job situation. Um, it's like you want to put your burden down. You've been working too hard, and it's it's time for change. And the Four of Swords is the outcome. So I feel like you need rest. Um, if you've been really working, you know, working really hard, and you haven't taken time off, I think you need a vacation. You need to take some time off and to rest and to recover and to heal. So either you're dealing with someone that's going through a period of needing healing and rest. You could be dealing with someone who's got some type of illness. Or it could be you yourself that needs to take time out. You need a time out um, to recharge. But I feel like you're on the edge of a brand new beginning with the Fool. A new cycle coming in. And it's one that you're going to initiate. You're going to bring this energy in. You're not waiting anymore. And that's unusual for Taurus. Because usually we like to wait for things to approach us. We don't approach things. <laughs> but you might find yourself approaching, you know, changing in October. The energy might be shifting for you. Where you're going to go out and get what you want. You're not going to sit around and wait anymore. But I do, I do see that, that Four of Swords where now is the time to take a step back and, and rethink your plan and your strategy. We have Mercury retrograde. We have Mars retrograde. It's not really a time for initiation, but it's a good time to plan and to, to get yourself ready for when you do want to take action. 
and you're going to be doing a lot of thinking um, because your needs are changing. You're not going to put up with the same stuff that you put up with in the past. So let's see what the astrology has to say. You have a full moon in your 12th house and it's affecting your 6th house. So this is the psychological um, axel, axis. <laughs> Um, the twelfth house is everything that's hidden. So this this full moon could bring things to the surface that have been hidden from you. If anyone has, if there's any any kind of secretive um, dealings going on, especially around work, they may come out right now at this full moon. Or you might be more aware of how you self sabotage, how you get yourself into things. <laughs> You know, um, the twelfth house is also our blind spot. Our um, the things that everybody could see about us, but we can't see. So it's a good time to look at or try to uncover those things that you don't want to look at normally, to bring them to the surface. I mean, the twelfth house in the ancient times is known as the house of hidden enemies. Uh, but a lot of times the enemy, and you could have some people working against you, and you're going to find that out at this full moon, um, if, that's, if that's true. And whatever you find out, but it's also sometimes that we, for whatever reason, for fears, for um, psychological blocks, negative self-talk, we sabotage ourselves, and we're not even aware of it. So this is a good time to see that, see that pattern, and change it. And this moon is in conjunct Uranus in the first house. So Uranus is shaking you up. It's shaking up your ego. It's causing you to act out of character. Uranus wants you to be living an authentic life, not going through the motions, not being so like a slave, you know, chained to a, you know, a ball, an iron ball, you know. Uranus wants you to live and have fun and and be motivated and excited about the work that you do. So if there's anything that's really stagnating and you're not doing anything about it, Uranus will shake it up and get you on the right track. It will break you free of... So especially with this 6 and 12 energy, I feel like you, it's a good time to break free of any kind of psychological... Um, hang-ups or thing or baggage that you need to release. Uranus will help you do that. Now you have Venus going through the fourth house, so you're going to really be wanting to um, fix up your house. You might be wanting to decorate. You're feathering your love nest when Venus goes into the fourth house in Leo. And it's trining Mars in Aries in your twelfth house, so there could be some romantic potential. Um when Venus trines Mars. And it could be something that is a private, quiet kind of thing, not something that's out in the open, like you might be keeping your feelings hidden about someone that you're interested in. Mars is squaring Saturn and Pluto in your ninth house, so there could be some um, arguments over what you believe and what other people Believe, you know, that you could be arguing over ideology. The ninth house has to do with higher education. It has to do with travel, long distance travel. Maybe you're feeling frustrated because you can't go anywhere, um, or you're wanting to, you know, learn, and take up, take a class, and you're running into obstacles. So there's a little bit of frustration. And with Mars um, in the twelfth house, you could be having anger issues that you can't really, like, you know, it's like resentment. You might be feeling angry about something, but you can't communicate it. You feel frustrated, and so you just like being passive-aggressive. Jupiter is in the ninth house, though, and it's sextile Neptune in the 11th. That's a good aspect for manifesting a dream. Jupiter's giving you opportunity, so don't, you know, let opportunity pass you by this month. Now, Mercury is moving into the seventh house in Scorpio. Mercury will be in Scorpio, and it will go retrograde in your seventh house. So that could bring some people back from the past. Maybe there's someone from the past you're going to reconnect with, or someone you need to forgive. Um, 
that's a possibility. Mercury goes retrograde on the 13th, and it's going to, it'll um, then go forward on the on November 3rd. It'll be retrograde the whole, the, most of October, from mid-October till the end of the month, and go direct in November. Pluto in Scorpio, it's, Pluto is in your seventh house. Well, no, it's, what am I saying? Pluto is in your ninth house, and it's going to go direct. So probably, um, if you've been having power struggles with people who are from a different culture than you, or maybe disagreeing with your teachers, or disagreeing with other people about belief systems, um, or maybe you've been re you're thinking about you know where what do I need to learn, or what do I need to teach when Pluto goes um, forward, it's gonna things might start moving forward as well. So you might have, you've had a lot of time to think about um, how do you deal with power and how to communicate your needs because, you know, the ninth house is about, is, and the third house are communication houses. Um, so maybe you need to learn how to communicate about your, um, your anger. If you're feeling frustrated and angry with a power or an authority figure, Maybe someone who, because it's a cultural difference. I feel like it's a cultural thing. And so you need to understand each other's culture. And that will help with the communication. Because remember, when Mercury goes retrograde, a lot of times there's a lot of misunderstandings, miscommunication. So you want to make sure that you're spe you know, speaking clearly, that people are understanding you. Especially in relationships. Because um, you have some energy around the relationship axis. Then we have the new moon in the 6th house on the 16th of October in Libra. Uh, so there could be a new beginning at work. Maybe you have a new work project coming in. Or you may even start a new job where uh, you feel like uh, this is kind of a weird thing. Because you have this new project coming in, but you still have Mars opposing the new moon. So there's some anger and resentment. You have to get over this anger and resentment or it's going to block this new beginning. So there's a positive new beginning happening. But um, Mars is opposing it. Either you know someone might be fighting you from behind the scenes or you may be holding back resentment. You might be biting your tongue. and So it's really good to um, communicate your anger if you're angry about something, if you're frustrated about something, communicate that in a healthy way. It doesn't have to be volatile. You don't have to go to extremes of emotion. But learn how to release your anger so that it's non-confrontational. Um, Venus is going to be in your fifth house at this new moon. And it's going to be trining Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in the ninth. So you could have a new... It could be, work, it could be a new relationship... A new romance, because the fifth house is romance. It could re involve children, a new beginning with children. Um, it could also mean a new creative project that comes your way. And with the ninth house being so heavy, it could be a project that has a global reach, or you're dealing with people from a different country, a foreign country. And um, there could be some kind of romantic uh, connection coming out of this. Like I said, Mercury is going to be in your 7th house. And it's going to oppose Uranus in your 1st house at this new moon. Or even before the new moon. Because Mercury will be... At the at the new moon, Mercury will be 11 degrees uh, Scorpio. And Uranus will be at 9 degrees Taurus. So Mercury is going to cross Uranus. And then it's going to come back. Um, it's going to be close enough that it's going to be almost... An exact, it's only, it's only two degrees away from an exact opposition. So there could be some surprise messages. Some, some Something may take you by surprise. And I feel like it's a new beginning that you're not, you weren't expecting. Here's the fool. It, and it's going to be a dream come true. It's going to be one of your wish fulfillment things. Like if you're, if you're looking for a new beginning, it can happen more toward the end of the month after this new moon. There could be a surprise message from someone you weren't expecting to hear from that could put you on a new path and get you out of this stuck energy 
and this overwork. I'm like working all the time and I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Um, there could be a breakthrough when Mercury opposes Uranus and with the new moon in Libra. The only thing that's challenging all of this is that it's getting out of your comfort zone. This new beginning could be um, a little bit uncomfortable because it's, it's like it's, a, it's foreign. It's the ninth house. You know, it's not something that's familiar to you. And it's going to involve work. So the way out of the T-square, that this is forming a T-square. You have the moon and the sun opposing Mars and then being T-squared by Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto. So the way out of the T-square is through the opposite energy of Cancer, which is the nurturer, the healer, in the third house. And it's about communication. So maybe you need to have a healing conversation with someone um, that helps release some of this tension and it helps you to release some of this repressed anger that you've been feeling all month and this new the message that comes in is going to be a hopeful one and it's going to give you hope for a new beginning and you're going to get a chance to rest and to heal from all the stress that you've been under so there could be some new development in a relationship more toward the end of the month like middle towards the end like mid October, around right after the new moon, so get ready, <laughs> and uh, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone because you might be dealing with someone that's from a different culture than you or a different belief system. Something is go it's going to be different, and you have to expand your world to understand this person or this to deal with this relationship. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Taurus. If you did, click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button. If you want a private reading, click on the uh, link in the description box. And we can do a reading that's based specifically on your issue. In the meantime, um, thank you for your support, for supporting this channel. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for purchasing readings. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the readings. We've come through some difficult transits. And October is, is going to be difficult again with Mars squaring Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto. And um, we just have to get through October. And I think things will start to improve as the Mars energy moves away from Aries and Capricorn. Um, and when Mars starts to go direct, we'll, we won't feel so frustrated. So um, look forward. Focus on this new beginning. And take, take a time out if you need it. If you need rest, don't be afraid to take it. This is a good month to take a time out with Mercury retrograde, with Mars retrograde. Um, and to really think about where you're going and where you want to be when the planet, when Mars starts going direct and Mercury starts going direct. So in November, the end of November, beginning of December, um, that's when you want to start taking action. So in the meantime, get the rest that you need. Take time out to rethink and plan your strategy and um, put your burden that you're coming to the end of a cycle of heavy work and burden and you're on the edge of a brand new beginning with the fool so keep your hopes up and um, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone it represents a better life a new life and um, I think you'll be happy with the results so I hope you enjoyed this reading Taurus and I will take it. I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.